everyone, and welcome to Full Frame. Jason Scott Lee is a Chinese-American actor who's perhaps best known for his breakout performance in the biopic Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, about the legendary Chinese-American martial artist. It's your birth certificate. Bruce Lee. It sounded very American. I'm going to America. French fries. Sky's the limit, that's what they say. Not a Chinaman's chance. They say that too? I'm different. You kind don't understand English. You guys killed my dad in Korea. You think I'm happy to see you, my Jim? Don't touch me. Or what? Huh? Or I'll touch you back. <laughs> After his acclaimed portrayal of Bruce Lee, Jason went on to star as Mowgli in Disney's 1994 live adaptation of The Jungle Book. He became an inspiration to other Asian actors who rarely saw relatable faces in Hollywood. But he eventually took a hiatus from Hollywood for almost two decades because the roles for Asian actors, especially Asian males, were limited. Now, today, Lee is back in Hollywood and says things are improving, but the fight for a higher profile is still ongoing for Asian actors. Joining us now from Singapore to talk more about this issue is Jason Scott Lee. Jason, welcome to Full Frame. Glad to have you. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very honored to be here. Well, Jason, let's start from the beginning. Uh, was acting something that you always wanted to do, or did you just sort of happen to get into it? Um, it wasn't something I always wanted to do. It was uh, it actually stemmed from sports. I think because being uh, an athlete in high school and then after high school, um, there was this uh, appreciation of, of audience, uh, uh, um, I guess, applause and, and uh, <laughs> adoration, and and I think that kind of set the stage for um, my interest in in acting. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So it, it kind of started from that, and then uh, as I got uh, into Los Angeles by way of um, academics and things, I started uh, pulling more towards um, uh, stage and, and uh, t TV and film uh, acting. Right, right. Well, this is where it's this is where it all happens here in Hollywood. But you mentioned mm. you grew up in Hawaii, um, and then as you said, you then came to mm. Los Angeles. So Hawaii, being majority Asian population, as we know. Um, coming to L.A. and trying to make it in Hollywood, was that sort of a cultural shock for you? Uh, yeah. Um, I grew up in the islands in Hawaii, and uh, we have a, a, a sort of our language of our own. We, we speak pigeon English. Right. So even, even landing myself in Fullerton, California, in, in Orange <laughs> County, um, right. Uh, it was uh, fairly what we, we called white bread, so uh, I had to sort of retune my uh, linguistics and uh, try and fit in. And I think yeah. that's kind of been the game ever since, is, is, is trying to fit in. And, um, and I think the, you know, the, the hard part was, I mean, I think the easy part for me is, is that I was fairly naive at the time, and, mm. um, and I didn't have expectations. Um, so that was sort of uh, made the journey somewhat easier because there, there was no requirement to to excel or anything. It was just, you know, kind of a, a self-driven thing. Right, right. But it must have been tough at that point um, when you were starting because there were very few Asians acting in Hollywood. Um, and those that were were just getting probably bit parts. Um, and not much exposure. So tell me what it was like for you when you would have to go out on auditions. What kind of re reactions would you get from casting directors? Um, in the early days, let, let, let's say the late, the late 80s, and um, the, the roles were very, very limited. I mean, there, there was a lot of uh, projects that were coming up that were immigration immigrant uh, roles, mm. um, uh, mostly one-liner bit roles or even one-word uh, bit roles. Right. Um, and, you know, like I said, I was a young actor. I was 19 years old, and um, uh, there wasn't a lot of expectations. And I think the, the, the big turnaround for me came when I started uh, doing leads um, or when I started getting... Uh, bigger roles, say, in a, an 
CBS after school special or something. Mm, mm -hmm. um, and though those, then you really started to see once you start getting into the, the larger supporting roles or um, the leading roles, then you really started seeing how inhibited uh, your opportunities were. Right, right. And uh, lots of stereotyping, which we're going to talk about in a second. But your big yeah, break, yeah. of course, was when you played Bruce Lee in the biopic. That Correct. must have been incredibly intimidating and exciting at the same time for you. Tell me what that was like. Uh, I, I grew up with Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was an icon for me. Uh, my father used to take me to his films. Yeah. And um, I was completely blown away. Even in my first meeting with uh, Universal, um, they, uh, over the phone, they told me to come in for this project called Dragon. They did not tell me it was a biopic for Bruce Lee. Oh my, you had no idea. So when idea. I sat down, wow. I had no idea. When <laughs> I sat down with them, um, uh, they, they explained to me and I, I immediately thought to myself, I must, you must be, I must be kidding myself. Like this, <laughs> there's no way I can, I, 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 I didn't have any martial arts training at the time. Wow. Uh, I didn't, uh, you know, it's, uh, I always make the, com the comparison that it's like asking someone who never danced before to portray Rudolf Noriev uh, <laughs> in, in a story like that. So, right. um, yeah, I was, com and, and it was a heavy weight. It was a heavy, heavy burden on my shoulders because I was just starting my career. Uh, yeah. I was 25 years old, and, and um, I thought if I make a fool of myself in this, that, and I've seen... Uh, a lot of actors try to portray him and, yeah. and fail miserably or, or kind of somewhat make a mockery of it. And uh, I felt like, God, I just, in my heart, I just wanted to do the man justice. I just wanted to make something that was incredibly dynamic and, and that, that, that really sold that, that his charisma, his energy yeah. and his uh, just zest for life. Um, and I had problems with the, with the training. Um, I, when I was getting into it, I, I had I actually had an emotional uh, breakdown through oh, it. Oh, really? Uh, just because I, I wasn't, uh, I, I thought the train was moving too fast. Huh. And um, so in, you know, in hindsight, you know, it was kind of necessary because there are certain issues that you need to plow through and, you know, uh, uh, obstacles that you need to break through and, and sometimes they don't happen unless you invest or that kind of emotion or make that kind of commitment. Right, it's got to be a full-blown commitment to a role like that especially because he's so iconic and so well known. Th that had to be a life-changing experience uh, and also for your career but let's get to the nitty-gritty here about why we're talking today and that's the stereotypes that exist in Hollywood and to this day for Asian actors um, who want to make it in Hollywood. The Bruce Lee story, that was about an Asian man. So therefore, that was an easier role for an Asian actor to play. So what are your thoughts on what's going on in Hollywood to this day? We hear a lot of criticism still about whitewashing, you know, Oscar's so white. That was a big controversy, you know, earlier this year. Yeah. What, what do you think now? What, what do you think's happening? <laughs> oh, boy, it, it, it's... It, it, it's finally getting the recognition, you know, the issues are getting the recognition it, it actually needs. Yeah. Um, that's my point of view. I, uh, I, I've been up for a number of the more recent uh, uh, roles that, that were uh, significantly Asian in origin and um, was passed on. Um, so uh, it's, I always thought, you know, back in the 90s that I thought it would go forward. It was always this promise that, uh, oh, you know, things are going to change, um, you know, uh, but it, it's gotten somewhat more confusing. Mm. Um, how, so, how so? And I, and I look at it, well, back when we, in the 80s when we started, feature films were sort of this elite kind of place to be in. And that's why you had the Oscars. Right. Um, TV, TV and, and internet was not as prevalent um, and it kind of it, it's it's showing it's rearing its head now that you TV has much more diversity for sure and um, and the internet if you look at YouTube has an in, the percentage of ethnic groups that are involved in front of the camera is is huge right um, and so 
feature films still carry that kind of um, that power, you know, where it's still trying to create an elite uh, program. Right. And uh, along with that, you know, come egos and and uh, sort of you know it goes hand in hand and so well, with that it's so like, J jason yeah. who do you bl who do you blame then um for this problem in hollywood especially like you're saying in the movie business is it the executives is it the producers is it the decision makers is it the audience uh, is it the role of actors like you who need to push the envelope a little bit more what do you think uh, I, I really contend that it, it's all of the above. Okay. Um, yeah, because um, I, I, I'm not a personality kind of thing to blame anybody or thing. Um, if we want to really show our stories and if, it, if our culture is so much, that, so much more different than mainstream Western culture, then we should write our own stories. We should develop so that, that we have ourselves to blame for that. Mm. On the other end of the spectrum, we do... Are, we are looking at executives and we are looking at studios that that have the inclination to make decisions to change things or, or enhance you know the situation for the better but are not making those calls right, um, right. so you, you do have you know back and forth issues um, because and, it, is, um, it is frustrating Jason I mean um, me as an, also an Asian American when I see these constantly, these decisions being made about the roles um, and who's being cast for these roles that are originally uh, meant to be an Asian character, and then they cast someone who's Caucasian, and that's still happening today, over and over and over again. So. I can't imagine what it's like to be in the business as an Asian actor. I see it from the outside, and I get frustrated. So <laughs> it must be, I don't know. I mean, do you feel like it's one step forward, two steps back? I mean, that's, that's sort of the feeling I get from folks here in Hollywood um, who are trying to make a difference, but, and yet they don't see enough change going on. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, um, it is uh, one step forward, two steps back. I mean, I, it, it's hard to to really. I, I think, you know, like you say, like now. Okay, let's say um, we have actors of Asian American descent who are speaking out. Mm -hmm. But if you notice, most of the people that are speaking out are actors that are doing. Pretty well for themselves. Right. Um, they're working actors. They're they're highly visible. Um, what you don't see is a lot of actors who are not working or who are afraid yeah. to step up to the plate. Right. And 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 be vocal because you know their 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 jobs are pending. They got bills to pay. Yep. You know they got kids to feed, and um, a lot of people aren't willing to step forward. And I think as a as a collective, Asian Americans, unless they're like you know third generation. Um, they they're not really vocal about a lot of issues to be argumentative about mm -hmm. um we tend to be as a collective a little more um do the work keep your head down stay humble you know kind of thing um so there there there's i think over the years it's been that way there's been individuals who have who have been outspoken who've had the platform at, at some point or another right um and maybe it hasn't been a strong enough push. You know, it hasn't had a big wave of effect like how the African-Americans have had um, in, in their approach to entertainment industry. Right, um, right. It just, you know, it does, it does seem, it storm. yeah, it does, sorry, Jason, to interrupt, but it does seem like we are starting to see this paradigm shift that's a bit stronger this time around. Um, that Asian, yeah. I, I think the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. I think the newer generation, the newer generation are, 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 are starting to actually become more Western, become more vocal, you know, mm -hmm. be, um, uh, you know, step into the into the light for politics as well. And, and as well as, um, you know, uh, racism. So, right, right. Well, you know, Jason, you're right now in Singapore, um, in Asia. And so I think it's pretty interesting what we're seeing when it comes to media um, and especially the power of Asia, particularly the power of China when it comes to Hollywood wanting to, you know, 
uh, seize the moment and get that market share in China. So do you think that's going to shift the way that the media behaves and the way that movies are cast because of the growing power of Asia? Um, you know, that, that, that's been happening for about 20 years now. And I, it's the money grab that's there. Um, whether there are Asians in films or not, if they're going to, you know, make big bucks off of any kind of film featuring, uh, say, predominantly Caucasian actors, then they're, they're going to put money towards it. it. Unless, you know, it's like in, in, in China, they want to see their own stars. They, they, they want to see, um, you know, their own um, identity there. Um, so even as an Asian American, we don't quite fit in mm. because maybe our, our Mandarin is not as, as fluent as, as what they demand. Right. Um, so I, I haven't seen much change in that direction. The, uh, Hollywood is definitely collecting a lot of money for, <laughs> for Hollywood films. Yeah. Um, and they're doing very well in, in China. Um, uh, but you don't see a significant uh, change, meaning the investors from China are not particular uh, about who is in the movie. Yeah. And maybe, you know, we always had this thing, you know, throughout my career about being the token Asian. You know, it's like you look at some of the big blockbuster uh, superhero movies and they'll put in a token Asian. Yep. You know, and, and but they won't, they will not give it, give that bigger role or the leading role to uh, an Asian American. Right. Um, but they'll, they'll give you like little kibbles and bits, yeah? Jason, um, one last question. Uh, what are you up to? What are your, some of the projects that uh, you're working on and what can we expect from you? Um, I'm, I'm actually getting behind the pen and I'm actually writing. So um, I, I'm looking forward to uh, doing stuff. Uh, there's, there's some things happening with YouTube Red. Um, there's also some uh, indie films that uh, show a lot of redemption, a lot of heart in. Great. Um, so, the, yeah, I got stuff going on. It's fun, you know. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Well, Jason, it was such a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Thank you all. Okay, take care.